In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to properly take care of a California king snake. California king snakes can reach up to three to five feet at a maximum adult size. So as an enclosure, we need to make sure that we give them the length of snake so they can fully stretch out as a minimum size. So if you've got a four foot snake, a four by two by two would be a very good bet as an enclosure size. However, if it grows larger than four feet in length, I'd recommend you upgrade your enclosure and get an even bigger one. You can use maximum reptile enclosures like the ones behind me here. They are great. They're escape proof for adult king snakes and that I really enjoy. Or what you can do is get small 40 gallon ones that are also escape proof and use them as grow outs for baby California king snakes. California king snakes are ectotherms or cold blooded. And what that means is they need external warmth from their environment. And that is why we need to provide them with heating. What we're gonna do here is give them a little patch of sunshine on one end of their enclosure like they would have outside. One thing to remember, California king snakes only want a gentle amount of warmth. They don't like it baking hot. To do this, we can give them a small low wattage heat bulb in a dome over one side of their enclosure. This means they'll have shade on the other end of their enclosure and they can move in and out of their sunshine patch just like they would do outside. There are a lot of California king snake breeders that will just keep them at a set ambient air temperature and that's without any form of dedicated basking spot. Although I don't agree with this, I think you should give them the ability to choose and thermoregulate. It does show that they will live eat and breed at a set ambient air temperature. Therefore, it doesn't really matter how hot it gets under a heat lamp in terms of surface temperature. All that matters is there's a gentle warmth of a low wattage heat lamp. Just make sure it's not blistering hot to the touch underneath a heat lamp. A gentle warmth from that low wattage heat lamp is gonna allow them to just sit there and warm themselves up and get their bodies above the ambient in the enclosure if they want to and even if they didn't they would still do fine at those ambient temperatures a 25 or 50 watt heat bulb from exoterra or zoomed would be a great choice in this example and you can find them linked down below now the ambient air temperature during the day can be anywhere from 70 to 80 in the enclosure what you'll find is you'll probably just get those ambient air temperatures as a byproduct of providing our little sunshine patch at night time you can have no heating on whatsoever letting it cool down at night time like it would outside is great for their immune system they want to be able to cool down and rest during the night and then they want to warm up and encourage themselves to bask in the daytime. You can let ambient nighttime air temperatures drop down to around 60 before you even need to worry about giving any form of supplemental heating at night. However, if you live somewhere really, really cold, then at nighttime you can offer a heat mat or a radiant heat panel on a thermostat set to like 60 to 65 at night. UVB is fantastic for California king snakes and I found them to bask quite readily. UVB is the rays of sunshine that give that feel good factor on the skin. The skin cells release endorphins in response to UVB. It also allows them to make vitamin D in their bodies which helps them metabolize calcium and that is really important for good bone health. The California king snakes won't necessarily die without UVB but it'll certainly be much healthier if you do give it to them. We can use UVB bowls by placing it over one end of the enclosure in our sunshine patch next to our heat lamp. This means there is still shade on the other end of the enclosure for them to get away from our sunshine patch if they should choose to. I'd recommend putting a low output bulb one third to half the length of the enclosure at a maximum. I do have a really detailed video on how to pick the right UVB bulb that's going to appear at the top right of the screen right now. If you're going to use a maximum reptile enclosure like I've recommended in this video, then a small 12 inch 15 watt 5.0 zoom ed T5 would be perfect for these setups. Just make sure that your California king snake doesn't have the ability to climb more than five inches to the bulb. You'll find the bulb linked down below. Here are the UVI readings per distance if you are interested. 5.5 and 4.4 are probably the limit of how high it would expose a king snake. So anything past five inches of closeness is going to get dangerous. So anything below that you're bang on. Now you want to turn these bulbs off completely at night so it's dark for them like it would be 
outside. You can get digital plug wall timers and set both your heat bulb and your UVB to come on during the day for 12 hours. So let's say you did 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Now you're going to need the ability to measure all of this and check every day to make sure things are on schedule. So what you're going to need is a digital thermometer and a temperature gun. I want you to place your thermometer on the shaded end outside of the sunshine patch so that the rays don't influence the reading and heat it above the actual air temperature and give you a fake reading. Once the digital thermometer is in the shade, it will give you an accurate reading of what the ambient air temperature in that enclosure actually is. You also want a temperature gun to measure the surface temperature of objects underneath our sunshine patch. Just make sure that things aren't blisteringly hot and if they get over 95 Fahrenheit, they're likely to avoid it. If you're using something like a rock underneath and it's getting really hot, try switching to a bit of wood that won't get as hot or just maybe the bare substrate. Speaking of substrate, California king snakes absolutely love to dig. So it's really important that we put substrate or bedding at the bottom of our enclosures. In the wild, they disappear underground or down holes when it's too warm or too cold on the surface. And what they do is they seek the humidity down in the earth or under covered objects. So I'd recommend giving them a soily substrate like topsoil mixed with play sand or even a pre-mixed substrate like reptisoil from Zoomed. This means that you can have moisture for them to dig down to down below but still be dry on top like it would be outside. Now you can use dry wood shavings like aspen, lignocell, or even pine shavings. They're actually really good for holding tunnels that these snakes like to dig. However, they're bone dry. So we need to make up for the fact that there's no moisture by giving them a humid hide. No matter which option you choose, just make sure there's several inches of substrate so our snakes have plenty to dig in. So California king snakes are secretive by nature and do best when there's lots of things in their environment, lots of clutter in their enclosure to make them feel nice and secure. They want to get in, on, behind, underneath, lots of different things in their environment. But making sure there is plenty of hiding places throughout the enclosure, what it actually means is you might actually see your snake more because they feel more secure wherever they are in the enclosure that if they get exposed, they can quickly duck away. If you only have a few hides, you might find that a snake clings to that hide because it feels exposed if it leads it. Now I really like cork bark because it's rot resistant and it's mold resistant even if it gets wet. Also being cork means it's really really lightweight which means we can let our king snakes dig under it without the fear of it being a heavy object and falling and crushing on them. I would place a piece in your sunshine patch so that your California king snake can sit up top and bask if it wants to or it can go underneath it and sit in the dark and warm up that way. Again, just make sure it's not within five inches of the bulbs if it's sat on top of that bark. You can also use plastic hides if you want to. Just make sure no matter what you use, you clutter the back of their enclosure all the way along so they can move across the entire length of their enclosure without being seen if they want to. Although these snakes are terrestrial, it doesn't mean that they won't climb. Climbing is really good for keeping them fit and using those muscles. So give them some branches to climb and let them exercise when they want. You also want to give them a water bowl to drink from and then change out that water every single day. Now if you are going for wood shaving substrate like we mentioned earlier, you're going to want to give them a humid hide. Now you can buy pre-made hides Commercially, they use stuff full of moss that is moist and that gives them a humid retreat or you can simply just get a tub and cut a hole in the tub. Now, cleaning your California king snake setup is relatively straightforward. Every day, just check for poop if there's anything you need to take away. Once per month, you can take the substrate out, bin that, disinfect and put fresh new substrate in the enclosure. But the truthful answer is kind of when it needs it. If it's still smelling pretty fresh and it's clean and you haven't really fed or it hasn't really pooped much that month, then carry on as you were. But let's say your king snake made an absolute mess within two weeks and it's smelly and dirty, clean it out then. The disinfectant that I use is called F10 and it's animal safe. It's used by vets. It's really, really good. And again, link down description. In the wild, California king snakes eat a very varied diet. In one study, they found the diet to be 29% mammal, 29% snakes, 25% lizards, 11% birds, 4% reptile eggs, 
1% unidentified reptiles, and 1% amphibians. This means they'll really appreciate you giving them variety in their diet at home. They've done really, really well just eating mice historically, so I would use mice as your baseline and then add in and swap out variety as and when you can. You can feed California king snakes, mice, rats, hamsters, gerbils, African soft furs, day old chicken chicks, quail chicks, quail eggs, older quails, reptile eggs, frogs legs, anoles, and even reptilink sausages. I'd recommend you feed your California king snake a prey item that's 10% of the total weight of the snake's body. So let's say you have a 100 gram snake, you'd feed it a 10 gram mouse. For a young king snake that's probably going to look like a pinky mouse, you can do that every five days, and then shifting into every 10 days into adulthood. Now often this is gonna look like pinkies, and then hoppers, and then small mice, and then medium, large, and then XL mice. Now as an adult, I recommend feeding them every 10 days as maintenance. If you notice your king snake acting crazy hungry or biting that's unusual for them in their particular behavior, I would take it down to seven days and see how we go from there. If you notice them getting fat, take it back to 10 days, or even still they're still getting fat, take it to every 14 days. And if they're still getting fat, then, then you can change down a prey item. So let's say you were feeding an XL mouse, you can take it down to a large mouse. Of course, there are other reasons for feeding more frequently, like reproduction or brumation, but that's outside the scope of this care guide. What I've noticed generally is it takes them 48 hours to 72 hours to poop after feeding. So over time, you're gonna get used to it and know when you're gonna start looking for feces to clean up. California king snakes are so inquisitive and excitable and often they act before they think. This is why sometimes they might try to chew fingers if they think it's food, or they might chew on the side of a water bowl because they're acting before they've even realized whether it is food or whether it isn't. What's nice is the California king snake has very clear ways of behaviorally communicating with you. So let's say they want you to leave them alone. That might start with a tail rattle and they'll rattle their tail against the substrate and make a sound. That's them telling you, hey, I want to be left alone and they're trying to create space between you and them. That's the first stage. If it's not an emergency, I'd recommend just leaving them alone and give them that space that they've asked for. If you still proceed and reach in and try to grab them, then they might strike and try to create that space with you using teeth, or if you've picked them up and they're still unhappy, they might musk. Now musking is when they release a fishy, smelly secretion from the cloaca that in the wild would deter predators from eating them. But just like dogs and the ladder of aggression, there's quite a clear progression up to that point. So they will tell you when they want you to leave them alone. I've completely trained my king snakes, but that is completely beyond the scope of this care guide. If you want more information on how to care for king snakes, then subscribe to this channel because far more are coming and everything we talked about in this video is linked down below. And I'll see you in the next video.